as Davos kicks off, the IMF says 60% of U.S. jobs could be impacted by AI. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. Right now in Davos, Switzerland, the World Economic Forum is hosting its annual gathering of the world's global leaders and intelligentsia, and depending on who you ask, Illuminati. And given the kickoff of that event, numerous companies and research firms are releasing their latest studies and surveys. And as might not surprise you, artificial intelligence is probably going to be the most discussed topic at this event. One of the reports that was released was from the IMF. Over the weekend, the IMF blog published their most recent survey, which found that almost 40% of jobs around the world could be affected by artificial intelligence. Now, they make clear that some portion of those jobs will be augmented by AI, where people will find greater productivity. On the other hand, some meaningful portion could be replaced entirely, in other words, automated away. Fascinatingly, the study found that this 40% was not distributed evenly across the world. We tend to be used to automation impacting the bottom of the socioeconomic pyramid first, but in this case, the IMF argues that it is in fact highly skilled and technologically enabled workers that are going to see the biggest impacts initially. So, for example, in low-income countries, AI exposure to jobs is around 26%. Emerging markets see that baseline 40% exposure. But in places like the U.S. and other advanced economies, the IMF argues that around 60% of jobs might be impacted by AI. Now, in terms of what percentage of those 60% of jobs that are impacted will be impacted positively or negatively, the IMF writes, roughly half of the exposed jobs may benefit from AI integration, enhancing productivity. For the other half, AI applications may execute key tasks currently performed by humans, which could lower labor demand, leading to lower wages and reduced hiring. In the most extreme cases, some of these jobs may disappear. So you're basically split down the middle of 30% seeing a productivity improvement, with 30% seeing their jobs fundamentally threatened or changed. Now, these numbers are huge. We've never had any sort of force moving this fast that impacted this percentage of the workforce in such a dramatic way. Because of that, the IMF is particularly concerned about how this might impact inequality. They argue that both within and between countries, we could see some serious polarization. They basically say that workers who can harness AI might see an increase in their productivity and wages, while those who can't fall behind. They think there's an age dynamic, given that research has shown that one of the impacts of AI is catching less experienced workers up more quickly. Overall, they write, the effect on labor income will largely depend on the extent to which AI will complement high-income workers. If AI significantly complements higher-income workers, it may lead to a disproportionate increase in their labor income. Moreover, gains in productivity from firms that adopt AI will likely boost capital returns, which may also favor high earners. Both of these phenomena could exacerbate inequality. Now, one thing that this report isn't talking about is the potential that those higher income workers could themselves see some of their skills replicated by lower income or remote workers in other places, which would put downward pressure on wages. But still, ultimately, the IMF concludes in most scenarios, AI will likely worsen overall inequality. Their argument, they write it is crucial for countries to establish comprehensive social safety nets and offer retraining programs for vulnerable workers. Now, of course, there are many sides of this debate. Speaking with Yahoo Finance at Davos, Bill Gates argued that AI is great for white-collar workers and coders. He said, I found it's a real productivity increase. Likewise, for coders, you're seeing 40 or 50% productivity improvements, which means you can get programs done sooner. You can make them higher quality and make them better. So mostly what we'll see is the productivity of white-collar workers will go up. Now, of course, the pessimistic take on this is the replacement of a lot of coders because code assistants can do their jobs for them now. But the optimistic take that many folks in tech have is that basically humans have an insatiable appetite for new creation and that to the extent that coders can be made more productive, we won't have some basal set rate of innovation and new things built that we'd like where some number of people will all of a sudden sit idle. Instead, we'll just create more things, leveraging those new productivity gains to just build more. What about business leaders more broadly? One of the big surveys to come out in advance of Davos was from PwC. Hold aside everything else, what's clear is that they believe that AI is going to have a big impact. 68% of US CEOs that were surveyed think that generative AI will increase employee productivity in the next 12 months. Around 50% of US CEOs expect generative AI to help themselves become more productive. 44% of those CEOs say they see generative AI providing a net increase in profits in the next 12 months. That's versus just 3% who anticipate a net decrease. PwC wrote, Investors are increasingly demanding executives pursue profitable growth, prompting many CEOs to turn not only to cost containment strategies, but also to Gen AI. What's alluring about Gen AI is its dual ability to produce efficiency gains that hold down current expenses 
while simultaneously enabling company reinvention. This may mean that when the macroeconomic headwinds abate, the stage is set for a potentially faster rate of growth on a lower cost basis. This leads PwC to say that 2024 might be the year of, quote, business model reinvention. Here are some of the other statistics. When asked, in the next three years, generative AI will significantly change the way my company delivers, creates, and captures value, 68% of U.S. CEOs agree. When asked if generative AI would increase competitive intensity in their industry over the next three years, 65% of U.S. CEOs agree. When asked in the next 12 months if generative AI would improve the quality of their company's product or service, 61% agreed. And here's a crazy one. In the next three years, generative AI will require most of my workforce to develop new skills. On that, 61% of U.S. CEOs and 69% of global CEOs agreed. Now, there are some negatives as well. As part of the same report, around a quarter of CEOs expected that AI would lead to job cuts in the coming year. Specifically, 25% said that generative AI would lead to job cuts of at least 5% this year. The industries that were most likely to expect AI-related layoffs included media and entertainment, banking, insurance, and logistics. Now, the PwC report wasn't the only one that came out. Deloitte's AI Institute also surveyed 2,800 director to C-suite level executives and found that only one in five said that their organization is highly or very highly prepared to address AI skills needs in their company. Just one in four say that their organizations are well prepared to address AI governance and risks, and only 47% said that they are sufficiently educating employees about AI. The majority said that right now when it comes to AI, they're focused on tactical benefits, specifically things like improving efficiency, reducing costs, rather than innovation, reinvention, and as Axios put it, using it to create new types of growth. But it's really clear that there is a big, blaring talent question, and even more than talent, a skills question. Again, only one in five think that their organizations are highly or very highly prepared to address AI skills needs in their company, which seems to me like a massive opportunity for someone. Now, that is part of an overall state of generative AI in the enterprise report, which has just a ton of good information. Interestingly, despite all of the negative headlines, these leaders are definitely more optimistic than you might think. 30% report uncertainty, but 62% represent excitement. 46% say that they're fascinated by AI. 79% said that they expect generative AI to transform their organizations over the next three years. When it comes to addressing this talent gap, 17% said that they're making changes right now, 24% said that they're going to make changes within a year, and 31% said that they're going to make changes to their talent strategy over the next one to two years. Lastly, one more statistic that I thought showed just how big the stakes are in these CEOs' minds. And this one we go back to that PwC survey for. 45% of the 4,700 global CEOs surveyed do not believe that their businesses will survive barring significant changes in the next 10 years. Now, of course, that doesn't mean that they think that their companies are going to go out of business, just that they assume that in this AI-powered world, they're going to have to make major, major changes. Really interesting stuff from these surveys, and certainly not, I don't think, the last that we will hear from this Davos event. For now, however, that is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown. Thanks for listening or watching as always, and until next time, peace.